In this lecture, I'll be providing a very brief history of health psychology uh, as a field of study and as a professional discipline. The historical roots of health psychology uh, go back, of course, uh, several centuries. Um, we know that uh, throughout much of recorded history, uh, more or less, things like emotions, behavior, personality uh, have been acknowledged in terms of their influence on health. Uh, going back to ancient Greece as one example, in the 4th century, people looked at uh, four elements or the four humors. Uh, those humors were related to both personality and illness and were a way of looking at sort of supernatural forces uh, inside the person that may be contributing to illness. Uh, we know that for centuries in Eastern cultures, there's been an emphasis on the importance of balance and harmony and uh, mental well-being as an important aspect of health. If we go back to the Middle Ages um, in Europe, uh, there was a huge focus on spiritual matters. Uh, the health of the body was relatively unimportant, and that may not be that surprising given that um, in that, that time, most everybody was sick much of the time. Uh, infectious diseases were rampant. Uh, of course, public health measures and sanitation was virtually non-existent. Uh, lifespans were in the 40s or less. Um, and so really people focused more on spirituality and sort of the well-being and future of uh, one's soul because the body was uh, relatively temporary. Uh, moving into the Renaissance, and you may recall this from a figure in the previous lecture, uh, was when we first saw really the, the hints of what we might call you know, modern approaches to health psychology. Uh, with Cartesian dualism, uh, they viewed mind and the soul as basically separate from the body. Um, sort of non-interacting uh, systems. And so therefore, uh, health of the body was really had an almost exclusive focus on anatomy or the biology of health, looking at the functioning of the body itself, really seeing that as completely separate from the mind. And to some extent, we continue to uh, fight that sort of uh, uh, um, historical uh, resonance uh, even today, where we sort of struggle to think about uh, mind versus body is perhaps being more integrated. Beginning in the 19th century, of course, with the first uh, sort of green shoots of modern psychology, folks like uh, Pavlov, Freud, and James, we started seeing um, possibly more interdisciplinary uh, scientific approaches. Uh, as we approached the, um, uh, the late 19th century, we saw modern medicine start to emerge. Although it really wasn't until the middle of the 20th century that the American Medical Association was founded in 1947. Um, if we go back to uh, the earliest parts of the 20th century, 1910, we saw a very important report called the Flexner Report. Uh, the Flexner Report really had a focus on the training of physicians and medical education. One of the important parts of that Flexner Report relative to uh, our focus in this course is it had an emphasis on that uh, physicians really needed to learn more about uh, human behavior, about personality, um, and about how psychology might influence health as well. And uh, that's reflected even in today's uh, training of medical students where um, at least a portion of training in every medical school is devoted towards uh, human behavior and its influence on health and how to interact with people to um, change behaviors to influence health in a positive direction. So the 20th century is when we saw, of course, the most rapid gains in the earliest foundations of health psychology. Um, in 1928, we see our first relative, uh, relevant textbook. Uh, Bach came out with the teaching of psychology in the medical course, uh, partly as in response to the Flexner Report's recommendations. Uh, we see psychology become more and more integrated into the training of physicians, and uh, at that time, psychology was really thought of as a part of uh, what was considered the art of medicine. It wasn't considered part of the science of medicine. That was still relegated to uh, sort of anatomy, physiology, biological aspects of of health and psychology is really seen as sort of the art of medicine. How do you have the human touch and work with people? Um, we saw the, the emergence of what was called uh, medical psychology in the middle of the 20th century, uh, which is really an adjunct to medicine. This is really looking at uh, the psychological aspects of medical treatment, defining medical from a biological uh, point of view. So how do people adhere to their medications? What are the psychological effects of certain medical procedures? Uh, those sorts of things. 1930s, we saw the emergence of a field called psychosomatic medicine. This was a field that really focused on the impact of stress and emotions upon the etiology of disease and, and how the, the mind and the uh, experience and affect and emotions um, really affect the biology of disease. 
Uh, so an important concept called psychoneuroimmunology emerged there, and that's really the interaction uh, between how our uh, psychology uh, interacts with our body's immune responses, and there's been incredible advances over the last 75 years or so in that area, and we'll talk about uh, more later in the course when we talk about stress in particular. And of course, we've seen, as we talked about last lecture, dramatic changes in the treatment of infectious diseases um, that draws more attention to behavioral contributions to illness. So as we've gotten more of a control on uh, infectious disease, we see more of an influence on uh, behavior in how that affects chronic illnesses and how those illnesses uh, develop and manifest uh, over time. As a result of that, we see some other disciplines emerge, things like public health, that initially was really focused on things like sanitation, clean water, uh, clean food, those sorts of things. Uh, epidemiology, really looking at what are the global population causes of uh, illness and disability and how can we understand that. And those are certainly important um, adjuncts to health psychology as we try to understand health. Um, we know that uh, the earliest sort of health psychology scientific advances came out of the area of stress uh, with things like uh, Cannon and Hans Selye uh, looking at stress and how that influences outcomes uh, like illness was a popular uh, focus. Uh, despite those advances related to stress, throughout much of the 20th century it's fair to say that uh, scientific medical advances really outpaced psychological science. Um, if you know a bit about the history of psychology, for much of our early existence, we were much more akin to, to philosophy, um, sort of a pre-scientific approach. Really, it wasn't until the latter third or so of the 20th century that psychological science really took hold, and psychology as a science and um, as even a what we call a STEM discipline uh, um, science, technology, engineering, and math. We think of psychology today as part of that group of scientific disciplines. So as we saw psychology as a field become more scientific, it also began to catch up in the area of uh, health psychology. A uh, timeline of some important developments in the field of health psychology. You'll notice most of these uh, occur in the latter half of the 20th century. So we see that sort of really health psychology is a relatively new field. In 1978, uh, the American Psychological Association established Division 38 uh, Health Psychology. Uh, so really it wasn't until the latter quarter of the 20th century that we saw uh, the first sort of recognition of a, of a discipline, a profession of health psychology. In 1979, the first book titled Health Psychology came out. And so, um, you know, we're not that far away from the very first book in this area. And of course, the book for this course also titled Health Psychology. In 1980, a couple other important developments, the Society for Behavioral Medicine forms. Society for Behavioral Medicine is an interdisciplinary organization that includes um, both physicians, nurses, but also social workers, psychologists, people who are interested in uh, psychological as aspects of health and um, interdisciplinary approaches. In 1980, uh, Joe Marzano uh, publishes his landmark article, um, that define terms of behavioral medicine, behavioral health, and health psychology for the first time. We're going to look at those definitions in a, in a few slides. In 1982, the first peer-reviewed journal was published uh, called Health Psychology, published by the American Psychological Association. Um, so in 1982, the first volume of that came out. Of course, that means health psychology science had been going on for a number of years. There was just sort of enough of it, a critical mass of it at that time, uh, to put together a journal dedicated to the discipline. In 1983, the first training conference on the training of health psychologists was held. And in 2007, so several years later, for, what, 24 years later, um, a group was established called the Council of Clinical Health Psychology Training Programs, or what's called CHIP-TIP as an acronym, uh, was established. And that group continues today to meet and is, of course, a relatively new group. And that group really focuses on um, how do we ideally train the next generations of health psychologists? Uh, there's a number of other sort of landmarks in the development of a discipline of health psychology. When you're looking at the development historically of any discipline, uh, particularly academic disciplines, you can look for sort of landmarks that tell you when uh, sort of critical mass has been achieved or when things are really grown to a, to a significant enough degree that, that they can take these steps. Uh, first, you see the development of organizations, so things like APA Division 38, 
the Society for Behavioral Medicine and Psychosomatic Medicine. Those all developed in the latter half of the uh, 20th century. You see journals available, uh, things like today we have several journals dedicated to uh, health psychology. Of course, the first, Health Psychology, others like Annals of Behavioral Medicine, the Journal of Behavioral Medicine, Journal of Clinical Psychology and Medical Settings, and the Journal of Psychosomatic Medicine. Uh, those have all been around since the latter half of the 20th century. And we also see training models and programs developed with the development of ChipTip, as I mentioned on the previous slide. One of the other interesting things to look at as a field develops is what are kind of the subdisciplines? What are the different areas or angles that, that uh, professionals may take in this area? One clue of, of the major areas is to look within uh, major organizations and look at how they subdivide themselves. If you look within the Society of Behavioral Medicine, they have a number of what are called uh, their subdivisions, or they call them SIGs. Uh, SIG is an acronym for Special Interest Group. So SIG means Special Interest Group. And when you see uh, a SIG in a professional organization or a subdivision, what that means is that that is a sort of a substantial concentration or subspecialty area within that. And as you look across the list here, you notice it's quite diverse, the different things in behavioral medicine, um, a, a closely related field of health psychology, many different things that they do here. And you might notice as you look through there that certain things excite you more than others. Uh, several things on this list actually are the way this course is organized. And so we will touch on a number of these issues um, as we go throughout the course. You'll notice near the bottom of the right-hand column, Theories and Techniques of Behavioral Change. Uh, well, guess what's our lectures next week? Uh, theories of Behavior Change. So um, we'll actually be touching on a number of these. And if you even look in your textbook, you'll notice it's organized somewhat relative to these important subdivisions as well. So this sort of tells you uh, what's going on, what are the areas of focus within uh, health psychology today. Uh, the profession of health psychology is continues to grow and has been growing substantially over the last um, oh, 40 or 50 years or so. Uh, there's a number of different types of health psychologists that have careers and work in professional settings. Uh, medical psychologists, people who may work in interdisciplinary settings very closely with uh, physicians or physician teams. Pediatric psychologists, who are really medical psychologists who work with pediatric or child uh, populations. We're seeing more and more today uh, primary care psychologists. These are folks who work in an integrated way in a primary care setting and may see patients there, may do assessments, may deliver brief interventions. We see people working in prevention who help communities or states develop prevention programs. Uh, behavioral medicine is folks who really use psychological interventions to treat um, physical illnesses. Gerontologists, people who focus on the psychology of, of development during aging and how that influences, of course, health is often a major factor there. And of course, neuropsychologists, people who study uh, uh, cognitive activities and cognitive abilities are a type of health psychologist as well. There's a number of related disciplines and occupations. These folks often have an interest in health psychology or work in an integrated way in their workplaces with health psychologists. Uh, preventive medicine physicians, people who really want to focus on prevention more so than treatment. Uh, public health professionals, people who are trying to um, change perhaps the behavior of whole populations to try to reduce health risks or health demands. Uh, other types of specific therapists, things like physical, occupational, or speech and language therapists uh, might be examples that would work closely with health psychologists. Addiction specialists. Addictions are really a subspecialty of health psychology, and so it's not surprising that uh, uh, substance abuse counselors or other people who work with addictions might um, be very closely related to health psychology. Uh, people who work in health promotion uh, or people who work in educational settings, people who are trying to educate the public about health and uh, health behaviors in particular are certainly a very closely related field to uh, health psychology. And lastly, nutritionists and dietitians. Um, uh, boy, if anybody works with human behavior and how it influences health, it's nutritionists and uh, dietitians, and so they are also a closely related field. Uh, these may be fields that you're interested in and you're uh, perhaps planning to pursue in your own career, and uh, hopefully the content of this class will have uh, an important impact on you and your ability to be as effective as you can be um, in your work in those settings with these allied uh, health professions as well. As far as careers in health psychology specifically, uh, health psychologists broadly defined uh, work in many different settings. 
Of course, many work in universities or colleges. Um, perhaps the most prominent place you find health psychologists are in hospitals or medical schools, uh, VA hospitals, public hospitals, university hospitals uh, are often places where you'll find health psychologists. Uh, some may work in government or with public health. So for example, with uh, county health departments or uh, state level um, uh, agencies. In fact, the uh, director of the Oklahoma Department of Health is a clinical psychologist, um, actually a graduate of OSU, Terry Klein. We may hear from him later in the course as one of our uh, interview the experts. Uh, some, of course, may go into private practice and specialize in uh, uh, health-related conditions. Uh, and some may even go into industry or work for pharmaceutical companies. Uh, some may work with um, uh, companies trying to understand the psychological impact of certain treatments or medications or perhaps how to help people ideally adhere to medications might be an example there. In general, health psychologists have a doctorate degree, so we recommend a PhD level training for those who want to go into research, teaching, and consulting careers. For people in more specialized um, uh, positions, a bachelor's degree or certainly a master's degree uh, may be appropriate if you're doing uh, fairly narrow uh, clinical intervention types of work or if you're wanting to work in a research assistant position or research coordinator type work, uh, certainly a BA, BS, or master's degree may be appropriate for that as well. So going back to a slide we saw in the last lecture, these uh, Joe Matarazzo's 1980 article definitions are uh, quite useful still today. Uh, this was kind of a landmark article that laid out, hey, here's the different aspects of this emerging field. Here's how I think that we should define them. And we generally uh, find these very useful today. So behavioral medicine, uh, Matarazzo defines as a broad interdisciplinary field of scientific inquiry, education, and practice, which concerns itself with health and illness or related dysfunction. So behavioral medicine is really focused on illness and working, working in an interdisciplinary way to try to address illness. Behavioral health is a broad interdisciplinary subspecialty within behavioral medicine, specifically concerned with the maintenance of health and prevention of illness and dysfunction. So if you think back to that figure from one of the first slides in the last lecture where we looked at health as being defined anywhere from the presence or absence of disease all the way to optimal wellness, behavioral health sort of folks focus more on the right side of that figure. So folks who are more interested in wellness and promoting health and preventing disease. Behavioral medicine focuses more on the left side of that figure, focusing on people who perhaps already have uh, symptoms of illness or disease or disability. They're trying to address those to, to reduce or treat those illnesses or um, reduce or eliminate dis related disabilities. Uh, health psychology then is more of a broad umbrella aggregate that includes really both behavioral medicine and behavioral health under the broad umbrella of health psychology. So health psychology we define as the aggregate of all of the educational, scientific, and professional contributions of psychology to both the promotion and maintenance of health, so the wellness side of things, the prevention and treatment of illness, the disease side of things, and the identification of ideological and diagnostic correlates of health, illness, and related dysfunction. So health psychology is the broad umbrella term. Behavioral medicine focuses more on illness and disease. Behavioral health focuses more on prevention of illness and disease and pursuit of wellness. I hope those definitions are helpful. So that wraps up. Uh, this lecture uh, on a very brief history and overview of the relatively young discipline of health psychology.